Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Let's Talk Manufacturing South Carolina. I'm your host, Rick Jenkins. As you can see, I am now not on the normal set where we record all of our episodes in Greenville. Today, I am at the TNS Brass and Bronze Works plant in Traveler's Rest. TNS is a leading manufacturer and global supplier of faucets, fittings, and accessories. Founded in 1947, TNS is headquartered right here in TR. Carolina Handling, they offer comprehensive warehouse and automation solutions, and they've been doing business in the Carolinas for 58 years now. As business boomed for TNS, they realized that they needed to streamline processes to ensure warehousing operations remained as efficient as possible, so they called Carolina Handling. Today, I'm going to talk to representatives from both of those companies about their partnership and how they work together to meet a challenge head-on. So today, I am joined by Gotham Sulakumar. He is the Senior Intra Logistics Solutions Project Manager, that's a mouthful, at Carolina Handling, and Bob Clement is the Production and Inventory Control Manager at TNS. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you very much. It is good to have you here, and man, I'm, I'm glad to be here down at TNS. Now, Bob, I came down here, uh, you invited me a while back, you gave me a little tour, we had a nice time, I got to see your plan, I saw how things worked. Uh, and so, and now we are in, uh, what, what's this building called? Well, this is our training center. Training so center. called Building D. And it's one of the buildings we have of four buildings here on site that right. we use for, for training of customers. I got it. Well, it's a beautiful building. And of course, folks, you can't see what's behind the camera, but it's a, it's a nice facility here, as are your warehouses. And uh, Gosen, I just met you for the first time uh, yeah. right before we came on the air, but I am well familiar with Carolina Handling. Uh, and the CEO of there, Joe Perkins, he's on the show from time to time. And so I'm looking forward to this conversation. All right, so let's get to it. I'm going to set the stage for a minute, and then we'll get into the details. So, Bob, business at TNS was booming. Things going great. A few years back, you all decided, you know what? It's going so well, we're going to build a warehouse, right? You see it coming. You see it coming. And as the warehouse gets built, which we're going to talk about you realize there are efficiencies to be had. I'm not sure exactly what all we can do here, but we know there are efficiencies. We know we can make the work like uh, our employees better uh, by being more efficient. And so you reached out to these guys at Carolina Handling, and you all got together uh, to to address this problem, which took uh, go through what about nine months or so, just about uh, yeah. to to go through this process. Um, of uh, optimizing that warehouse and coming up with some uh, solutions from an automated perspective to make life easier. So that's it in a nutshell, right guys? I mean, that, that's basically, so now folks, we're gonna talk about how that happened. And before we do that, let's start with a couple of uh, elevator speeches, so to speak. Bob, let's talk about TNS Brass. You guys have been here a long time, a big part of the TR community. Absolutely, we, we relocated here from uh, New York, New York, back in 1978. And we've been working out of the same 65,000 square feet of manufacturing and distribution space since we moved here. Um, as we continue to grow, we realized that we needed to expand in order to be able to satisfy our customers um, more efficiently. And the fact that we are now shipping close to 91% of our orders in a single day or, or two at most. So we need an, a, additional work centers so we can continue to build these faucets that you see behind us here. Right. Right. And uh, goes and turning to you for a second. Now, uh, Carolina, uh, handling you all have been around what 58 years. Do I have that right? Yeah. yeah and you time. all started. And of course that is not, who, it is not who you are now on league, but you all started as a, as a lift company. You, you were, uh, and still are uh, mm -hmm. the exclusive provider of, uh, uh, Raymond, Raymond for uh, yeah. portlets, right? That's the way you started, but that's not uh, all you do now by a long shot. Tell no. us about it. No, no, no. I mean, you're right. But historically, um, we've been, um, the number one provider, the only provider of Raymond lips um, in our footprint here, um, especially in South Carolina. Um, what that really allowed us to do was to have, you know, all of our 400 plus technicians out on customer sites, seeing all of the problems that our customers are facing. And we saw a problem that we could solve and we got into the automation space and have been growing ever since working with folks at Tatus Brass and yep. many other customers to really make automation work. Well, let's talk about uh, you working with those guys. So, um, Bob, let's go back to the warehouse, okay? So you all, you realize you needed more space. As I said a minute ago, you kind of saw it on the horizon. 
uh, right? And so you, you built a few years back, you built a new warehouse space, what, 60,000 square foot or so? Correct. So in 2021, um, right in the middle of COVID, um, we had a site that we were ready to build, but we weren't 100 percent sure what we wanted to do within the building. But during the middle of COVID, we were uh, shovel ready and the contractor contacted us and said, look, a lot of our work has dried up, um, but we'd like to continue and build you a building. So we finalized the plans for that building. Um, at that point, we really had no idea what we were going to do within the side of the building. We did understand we were going to move our shipping and our receiving area there. But what we wanted in our automation and our warehouse design was yet to be determined. Um, and so in 2021, um, we started evaluating with Carolina Hanley that one of their sales representatives came in and we started to have these conversations of what we felt the future would bring. Um, so through that entire period, um, they would come in as a team and evaluate what we were doing and why we were doing the things we we're doing to satisfy our customers. And from there, we were able to come up with a, a plan for the future. And that was what we did in, in 2022. We really finalized that plan. Now, I've been in the warehouse, as I mentioned. You took me on a tour, a beautiful little spot there, not little, 60,000 square foot. You needed more manufacturing space, right? Business booming, you got to have more space to make things happen. Uh, which is what you turned that warehouse uh, into. Now, you say that these guys came and visited and you all began the conversation. Uh, Dosa, how long had you been uh, working with these guys, you yourself? Honestly, before we kicked off the project, I don't think I'd even worked with, with Bob at TNS before. Right. Yeah. But, but uh, in terms of this project, you've been with them since the beginning uh, on this project itself. Yeah, correct. Okay, so you came in, you realize that, you know, when I look at that warehouse and I see everything that there is to see, and I it, call Bob and come down and take a tour sometimes. <laughs> Seriously, he does a great job. He'll walk right. you around. It's all kinds of cool stuff. But when I take that tour and I look around, you know, and I'm, I'm walking, my mind, I cannot, I, I can't get, wrap my brain around how much uh, organization that is required to make things happen so efficiently and when bob is showing it to me i am just seeing things that that it, it seems so lot oh yeah well sure you know that goes from here and it goes to there but it could not have been easy you probably had to come in and just immerse yourself into it for quite some time before you could see this is where we should go yeah yeah no we did a, a very detailed design study with bob and other folks at tns where I think we just sat with you guys for, for months and really tried to understand exactly what it would take mm -hmm. in order to get this facility to the point that um, they were going to be able to get orders out in the time span that they wanted to. So it took a lot of understanding of what the product lines were, um, what other parts of the facility would this portion of the system interact with and make sure that it was all one cohesive system. Right. And, you know, Bob, it, you were incurring some overtime at the time and you knew that that some more efficiency would resolve that problem but that's not really what this was about for you guys uh you're you all were thinking in terms of the quality of of work life so to speak for some of your folks on the floor because and, and you told me this and and i remembered about how important customer service was for for you and it's that way for every company but um for you all the real key is to get something to take an order and to get it out the door as quickly as possible. And these efficiencies help make that happen, correct? Absolutely. Um, we're extremely efficient at the assembly of a faucet. Um, our fastest work center can build, test, and pack a faucet in, in about 90 seconds. But the trick is, is trying to get the right faucets manufactured at a time to satisfy that customer's needs when you may have just placed your order at late in the day, at 3 in the afternoon, and he expects it to ship that day. Right. So we have that capability of doing that. Now, our employees are highly educated. They're, they're well-informed on all of our product. And we have over 10,000 active finished good mops. So it's just not a, a 40, 50 items that we build. It's, it's a large product line. It's not just these. No, it's just not the two you see. <laughs> um, so our employees do an incredible job at building high-quality faucets, but they do it in a very efficient manner. And again, as inventory control and warehouse management, we need to make sure we can store more components in order to satisfy those needs from our customer but also make it easier on our employees who's pulling all those parts and picking those parts for an individual order. Because it, you know, it, it doesn't do us any good to be able to build a faucet in, in two minutes and it's gonna take us two hours to pull the parts. 
So we have to find a way to make sure that we're able to satisfy not just the external customer, but the internal customer. And that is making sure that the assembly department always has the parts they need. Now you have customers global, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And so you've got customers all over the world. If a customer calls in, I don't know what that customer looks like for, you know, company is replacing some big, uh, that doesn't matter. But the customer calls in and says, I want, I want X. How long does it take from the time that call is received? And I'm setting you up here because you, you, you shared this with me one time. <laughs> How long does it take from the time that call is received for it to go through all of its place, hit in a box and go out that door? Well, we tried to plan for a minimum of two hours in order to get an entire order for one faucet out, two out the door. Right. Um, I've seen it done in as less than five minutes, but yeah. Um, but it, it's very efficient in the way we are able to process the orders. We, of course, try to keep our inventory level stock for our high volume products. So it's a simple pull and take over to the packing department right. and hopefully get the order out within 15 minutes. Yep. Um, and that's what our, our specialty is in our industry. Our competitors all have four to six week lead times and we can ship typically 90% of our orders within two days. Right. So it goes on back, back to Carolina handling. So it, you guys come in, and again, I, I can't fathom what must have been involved and how long it took to kind of figure things out. But one of the end results was, well, once you decided, you divided it up into two phases, mm -hmm. correct? Okay. And both phases together took about nine, nine months, months. Uh, for you to go through. The first phase, you brought in, and I forget what they're called, the vertical lift modules. Yeah. The vertical lift modules, you brought those in, and I saw those, um, and... We're going to show some uh, on the screen or, or give you a link to them. Uh, you can probably see that on the screen now to, to, to catch a link so you can see pictures of those things. But really cool. Explain what those were because that is at the heart of what is being able to optimize and create the efficiency is those machines. It's more than that, but that's a big part of it. Yeah, yeah. So a vertical lift module makes a lot of sense for somebody like TNS Brass where you have many different kinds of product lines with many different SKUs. And you need to be able to store hundreds of them in a very dense location and then be able to call them down quickly, pick them, and then pick another SKU very quickly as well. Right. So imagine like a very large um, canning machine where you say, I want, I want this faucet. And then next after that, I want this faucet. Right. So you imagine big trays come down, right. they give an operator the chance to make a pick, tray goes away, next tray comes up take another pick and move on. So it helps your operators then to be able to get those orders in quickly, be able to quickly pick mm -hmm. and then move on to the next item. Let me see if I can explain it uh, in terms of the way I saw it. Okay. Sure. So you've got, you've got a machine that I don't know how tall that 40 foot, I guess. About 30, 30 feet, 30 yeah. feet tall. And uh, it's probably 10 feet deep. No, no, no. Something mm -hmm. like that. Oh, right. And it has shelves that rotate and go all the way up and all the way down. Correct. Is that the way it works? Correct. Well, the, the vertical lift modules are new. Our older systems were vertical lift retrieval systems, which mm -hmm. is described just as you, as you described it. Yep. They would rotate in all the shelves. Yep. The benefit of a VLM is only one shelf is moving at a time unless you call for the second shelf. So you're not moving, say, 60 shelves simultaneously. You're only moving the one shelf, which makes it extremely efficient. And it makes it a lot faster and the fact that you're not turning and wearing parts. How does that shelf then find the part internally and bring it back down? How does that happen? Yeah, so, so the, the machine itself knows what type of product is on what shelf. Right. So an operator can call a specific product or shelf down. At that point, I believe that the VLM will then pull that shelf out of its storage, bring it straight down, and then present it out in front of an operator. I see. Then when that operation is done that shelf will then get pulled back in and then stored back inside again so the the automated piece goes up grabs the shelf itself and then pulls it back down correct yeah i'm with you now the benefit of a vlm over any other system is that the the ability to with it to call compaction would at the end of the day it will actually analyze what shelves are utilized the most throughout that day and while you're away in the evening it will resequence those shelves automatically so that your highest usage cell shelf is sitting there uh, at the lower levels, which makes it faster to retrieve because there's less distance to travel. Right. So it highly makes it much more efficient. Technology, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's amazing. If, if, what else was part of phase one goes? I mean, I, mean, I know that uh, there were lifts involved in, um, uh, you know, that kind of machine went. Yeah, yeah. We had, we had um, some swing reaches um, installed and brought in with charging systems and whatnot. 
we also had a bunch of rack really all in preparation for part of phase two, right? And this is nine months for a whole lot of technology. So we had to do a little bit of prep work by making sure that the VLMs went in first so that we had the amount of space required to get the rest of the system in on time. So talk about phase two. Yeah. What happened there? Yeah. Oh man. Phase two was when we really got going, right? Um, so at TNS, we installed quite a bit of conveyor and then integrated conveyor into a um, pick module system, right? So that an operator didn't necessarily need to do the, I think you said 10 to 12,000 steps a day. Now they're just very quickly able to walk back and forth about what, 50 feet or so, mm -hmm. um, be able to make picks, put it on a conveyor and then have the conveyor take it to where it needed to go as opposed to an operator needed, needing to be taking all of those steps. So when you say make picks, I would assume that is as logical as it sounds. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go over here and pick the part that I need. And what about the, uh, the what about the project? Uh, what what allowed that uh, f the project to be able to cut down from having to walk 50 yards there and to come here? I mean, how did that efficiency work? Yeah, I mean, it was really understanding, um, kind of going back to what we were talking about earlier in terms of all the different product and SKUs that. TNS would have to pick from understanding where to store um, high high pick items and be able to put them in a place where they were most easily accessible. Right. Really, just streamlining from a lean point of view, right. lean management point of view, streamlining how much work an operator needed to do. Right. Um, Bob, what was the end result with all this? Well, the greatest benefit we received immediately was the fact that with now. 2,400 pallet spaces compared to the 1,600 we had in our previous warehouse in the main building. We were able to now store more material. Now, we have planned this prior to COVID when we had the global supply chain crisis. And, but since then, we've been able to bring in additional material, whether from our local suppliers or from our suppliers from around the world. And we're able to store much more material here in our facility, travel address, in order to satisfy our customer. When we went from a standard, uh, shipping lead time of four to five weeks to 12 weeks at, at one point. So I, it became very difficult to make sure we had the right parts at the right location in order to build the product in daily. But with the new space, we were able to store additional material. We are able to respond to our customers faster. And, and overall, we're isolated away from the manufacturing area, which just makes us more efficient because now we don't have to be as concerned about safety with people walking through our, work, our warehouse or going to their work centers. and. And we're able to now focus on what we do best. And because we are truly a narrow aisle environment now, we're using rim and swing reach trucks and, and pick, pick, uh, pick forklifts mm -hmm. um, in order to, to utilize that space to its greatest capacity. Improved work life, uh, more efficiency, cut down on some overtime, and most importantly, uh, increased customer service, getting those, uh, that product out quicker than it's ever gotten out before. And continue to want to do so for the years to come. Yeah, mm -hmm. there you go. Uh, last thing, guys, I'll get you out of here on this. Y'all are still doing work together, right? I mean, you're, you're through this project, but what's happening now uh, between Carolina Handling and TNS? Yeah, I mean, actually, since the original project, I think this week we just put in several more vertical lift modules in the facility. Uh, we're talking about connecting other buildings to um, that one to make sure that we keep moving forward and keep pushing from that point of view. But we have many plans for the future. As we're Currently now moved all the distribution into one building. We are expanding the original facility into all manufacturing. So by the end of the year, we'll have additional work centers, but that now allows us to put vertical lift modules within the assembly department to hold a variety of sub-assemblies and small parts. And when we finally get everything moved in the assembly area, we'll actually put five additional VLMs at the front of our building in order to pick the manufactured parts that come off a plating line. So we are look forward to what the remaining part of the year will bring. Um, and now we're looking beyond that is, is Locust Robotics bringing in um, robots, moving the material between the two buildings. And we've had many conversations with Carolina Handling Team about this project, and we look forward to what 2025 will bring. Well, I do too, and I look forward to a future conversation about robotics uh, because that is certainly interesting. Uh, and uh, so thank you guys. Folks, uh, that is Bob Clement. He is with TNS uh, Brass and Bronze Works. Bronzeworks and uh, Gothen Siva Kumar, Carolina Handling. Guys, thanks for joining. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you for having us. Much. Good stuff. Folks, thanks for joining uh, another episode of Let's Talk Manufacturing. We'll see you next time.